Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie and I'm the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. One of my absolute favorite things to do is to take antique pieces of furniture and other odds and ends and actually repurpose them. Sometimes older pieces of furniture have lost their use in today's modern world, which is kind of unfortunate. Basically, I love to find historic pieces from the past and update them for a current use that I can use in my home and maybe even give some ideas or inspire you to do the same thing. This antique washstand turned bedside table is a great example of that. This project actually started when I was gifted an antique washstand by my aunt and uncle. They had no longer needed it in their home and so they offered it to me. Of course, naturally, the historic and furniture lover that I am grabbed it um, as quickly as I could. It is a beautiful piece of antique furniture, solid oak, great condition. The only issue is, is that washstands are short and wide. So they do not lend themselves to a lot of really functional uses in today's homes. I thought of two great uses that this could potentially be used for in my home. It would make a great end table if there was room in my living room, which there is not. The other use that I came up with immediately and I ultimately decided on was bedside tables. This presented one tiny little problem. I only had one. So this led me on a very long search and actually challenged me because I wanted to find one with a similar body style to the one I already owned. The other thing that I had to think about was I needed it to be under $100 because obviously I live on a budget. So I was looking for a similar body style as the one that I have currently and I needed it to be under $100. I kept my eyes peel on Facebook Marketplace. It took about six months, but I finally found one. I think it was listed at maybe $90 originally, and it wasn't actually in our area. It was about an hour and a half away, but thankfully my in-laws lived up there, so I had an in. I contacted the people and asked them if they would take any less for it, simply because from the photos, I could tell that it was gonna need a lot of work. They were happy to accept $80, which I felt was a fair price considering what they usually go for in my area and that I was having quite a time finding one with a similar body style. I was more than happy to snap it up quickly. Enter the Facebook Marketplace antique wash stand. For only $80, it looks intimidating, I agree. But I always think something is going to be easier than it actually turns out to be. So I was imagining like one coat of citrus strip and just scrub everything off of it and then sand it down a little bit and that would be perfect. That is not what happened. Overall, this piece is in really good condition. And even though it didn't have a traditional appearance and it had seen its better days, I have learned cosmetic issues are ultimately the easiest thing to fix on a piece of furniture. And I have refinished quite a few in the past, so I'm used to it. It's just a lot of work. But even with its issues, I knew that this was the perfect piece to go from this unassuming piece of furniture to a gorgeous antique washstand that had all of the charming cottage style vibes that I was looking for in a bedside table. So the tools and supplies you need to refinish an antique washstand are pretty limited, actually. The best news is that none of these are expensive materials unless you don't have an orbital sander. That would be the most expensive thing that you'd have to buy. Step one, scraping the top embellishments off. So I've got my scraper and my hammer. I'm gonna try to take off this stuff that they added to the top. None of these items were original to the piece with the exception of the drawer pull that was glued to the top. I suspect it was the last of the original hardware. Step two, first and second coat of citrus strip. Make sure to shake your citrus strip really well before starting. Um, I didn't, as you can tell. I like to just either pour it on a flat part of the surface or carefully apply some directly onto my paintbrush versus getting something dirty or having more trash. Note, you should really be smarter than I am and take the hardware off before you start also. Apply the citrus strip liberally all over the piece for best results, then let it sit about one to two hours.
Step three, scraping the paint out of the details. Quite a bit came off with the first coat of citrus strip, but of course, not as much as I'd hoped. It didn't even touch the Mod Podged paper cutouts, which was super disappointing. And I really tried. Like you can tell that I scraped pretty hard in some spots, just trying to get a little bit to come and hoping the rest of it would follow. I scraped the old finish and stripper straight into my trash can. It's not going to be perfect with the first or even second time of scraping, but really try to get as much off as you can with each go around. It'll save you when it comes to sanding. first round of stripping is done. My new fun toy. So it's got these little pieces. This is when the fun really began. This tool is literally a lifesaver. I don't know what I did before it. Note, there's a hidden sharpener for the blades in the handle also that we found on accident. Don't try to cover up your way. What you've seen so far, there are better ways. Throw preconceptions down the drain. Cause this is your last chance. You should know. I could have gotten the rest of the finish off with a third coat of stripper, but I just really didn't want to have to do that. Step four, sanding for the finish. The drawers are ready to be sanded. I've taken off what I can with stripper and with my scraper, and now it's just down to sanding. You really should start with 80 grit paper, but I was out and didn't want to go to the store. So here I just sand away with 120 grit. I think I used at least four pads, which is way more than you should have to.
obviously there is some staining, which is why they probably stained it dark to begin with, but I don't care. I still prefer the light oak color to the really dark, ugly look. Um, ugly, you know, it's beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Somebody might have loved that piece the way that it was, but I did not, so this fits me much better. On to the sides. So make sure you're learning from the mistakes that you did last. Send me your letter when you're done. Evaluating what your short life has become. You should know. You should know. So far there are better ways Throw preconceptions down the drain Cause this is your last chance You should know I'm gonna take one of my burnt out pieces. Another reason why you really need 80 grit to take off the worst part of it because I went through more sanding pads than I had to. It is what it is. Be really careful when hand sanding to go in the direction of the grain of the wood. Otherwise you could really damage the wood. I wish I realized while I'm concentrating to acknowledge people talking more. I really don't mean to zone out because I don't realize that I'm just not answering people. Step five, first and second coat of the polycrylic. Hello. It's time for the top coat. So I'm going to go with Minwax's polycrylic in clear I want, satin. I want to paint it. I'm not finished. Hey mom, I baby. 
Here's a word of caution, you don't ever wanna shake a can of polycrylic. You'll get bubbles in it that will never go away and it will always be a cloudy finish. Also, I leave a stick in it to stir it periodically because it will start to separate and again, the finish will end up cloudy. It also dries really quickly, so you wanna work really quickly and use as few brush strokes as possible to get full coverage. I only showed the first coat since the second coat is literally the exact same steps, with the exception of a light scuff sand and wipe down between coats. Read the directions on the back of the can for your best results. Let's look one more time at the before photos to remember what I had to work with. Send me your letter when you're done. Evaluate in what your short life. And now the dreamy cottage style after. The white oak just shines. It is so beautiful. Step six is actually adding the hardware and the final product. Overall, this project took about two full days to complete. It was a lot of mess and a lot of arm exercise, <laughs> but I would do it again in a heartbeat. Though I'm almost regretting not having stained it to match the first one. So I actually have to refinish the other one if I want them to match, which is perfectly fine as is. So, oh, the dilemma. I could have stained it to match, but it's so beautiful. So I'm just going to have to suck it up and bite the bullet and refinish the first one. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should go and follow me on Instagram at capturing underscore wonderland. When I finish the second one, I will be posting pictures of that to show the completed set. They are gonna be so gorgeous. I am so ecstatic at how this turned out. It's literally the perfect cottage style bedside tables. I don't think that you could find a solid oak bedside table for under $100 if you even went to buy it new. There's just no way. It would probably be three or $400 if you were to look. So 80 bucks was a steal even with the additional work. The hardware. The original hardware was obviously gone, but as you can tell, I pulled a couple of antique pieces that I had saved in my stash. So I went ahead and put those on the two smaller drawers. When I find hardware that matches the other two drawers, I'll go ahead and just drill it in and install them. But for now, those little knobs I found at Hobby Lobby and they were pretty cheap. I think they were $2.50 a piece. They match pretty awesomely and so I'm really happy with the look of it. Well, friends. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you've made it this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and please share my content. I would appreciate it so much. It would help me out with any friends and family you feel would enjoy this kind of content. Thank you so much again. Bye. <laughs>